The 45th Division, attacking northeast from Fecchio, advanced to Piedmonte d'Alife, supporting a second crossing of the Volturno by the 34th. 45th Artillery barraged a small village while the 34th fired on the Alife Piedmonte Road. The infantry pushed over rough terrain. By 20th October, Piedmonte d'Alife and the nearby town of Alife were both occupied. Our forward troops were pressing the enemy close. But now, in order to keep men, vehicles, and supplies moving, a great battle of reconstruction began. A treadway bridge constructed with the aid of a mobile crane. Our advance depended on our engineers. They worked fast. It wasn't only demolitions which faced American engineers. There was continuous rain, culverts to be dug, entirely new roads constructed. The war in Italy has been frequently called the war of roads and bridges. Infantry and engineers fought as a team. Enemy demolitions were calculated to hold us up for more than 24 hours. But in a matter of a few hours, bridges and approaches were in operation again. Purifying drinking water, frequently polluted by the enemy, was another task for our engineers. In one day, they could provide 20,000 gallons of drinkable water for use by frontline troops. Another service, showers for the 34th near the battlefront with hot water. This portable unit moved with the advance of the troops. The 45th Division, in action ever since it landed at Salerno, withdrew into Corps Reserve. The 34th and 3rd pushed northward, driving for the Capriatri of Valturno and for the opening in the mountains near Mignano, known as the Mignano Gap. Elements of the 34th, held back by the enemy for two days, entered Prata the 29th October. Inhabited dwellings were blown up without warning by the Germans in an attempt to block the road through Prata. A few broken bodies of helpless villagers could not hold back in advance. A third crossing of the winding Volturno was just ahead. On our left flank, the 3rd Division on 27th October advanced over the heavily mined road to Pietro Villamo. Medics of the 3rd Division gave wounded German soldiers more consideration than they bargained for. Civilians also needed medical care. General Truscott's 3rd Division fighters had driven the enemy from several mountain heights. They were showing signs of exhaustion. To ease supply difficulties, an oil pipeline was built by three engineer companies. All types of fuel, with the exception of lubricating oil, were piped through. By storing gas in five-gallon containers, large, vulnerable gas depots were eliminated. 